The perfect pocket knife is a knife that you have on you when you need it. Shut up and sit down. So with that in mind, I've created a list of the top five knives that I recommend for everyday carry. Now, I've made a lot of different list videos, so be sure you check those videos out, including knives that are great for people who are knife collectors or knives who, or people who have more restrictive budgets. But in this video, I'm just going to be talking about the knives that I think would be great for maybe if you're purchasing a knife for someone who doesn't own any knives, or this is one of their first knives, or maybe you yourself are interested in just finding the knife that is best suited for you. Now, I'm also going to be including links for all of the different knives that I include in this video in the description box down below. So be sure you check those links out. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first knife I'm gonna be talking about is the Rat Model 1. And the Rat Model 1 is smaller than its older brother and bigger brother, which is the Rat Model 2. So I wear between medium and large size gloves. And so the Rat Model 1, honestly, it just doesn't do it for me. It's just too big in pocket. But for those of you who are looking for an extra, for a larger knife, especially a budget friendly one, because this one comes in around 25 to $35, then I would recommend these knives right here. But for me, the Rat Model 2 does everything I need it to do. It's budget friendly easy to use it doesn't feel cheap and it's just a, it's just a great knife easy to keep sharp easy to keep clean now there's another knife that kind of went toe to toe in an attempt to rival it and this came out from se knives this is known as the zancudo but the reason why i don't carry this knife is because of the frame lock that even though it is a stronger lockup than a liner lock knife like the rat 2 I really don't like the late lockup, especially when it comes to frame locks, because they're gonna basically start hurting your thumb over time. So even though this is a great knife, I still enjoy my Rat Model 2 a little bit more. Moving on to the next knife. This one is also budget friendly, coming in at around $35. This is the, from Steel Wheel Knives, this is known as the Cut Jack Mini. So this is a knife that I've had for maybe about half a year at this point, but I love it. And the reason why I like it is how ergonomic it is. And with this jimping right here, the, the blade shape, I mean, you can really get excellent control over your cutting task. And it's lightweight and it's nice and grippy. It's, it's, it's perfect. The flipper is, is fun to use, it's easy to use, and it looks really cool. It's got that cool factor. And if you want a larger version of it, then you have the full size cut jack. They come in different colors and they come with different blade steels if you want to upgrade it. But at around $35, you're not missing much if you just want to buy, like I said, a good beater knife that also kind of looks cool. Now, by comparison, another flipper knife that it's, it's a manual flipper that also looks cool from CRKT. This is known as the Crossbones. I got this one somewhat recently, but I really feel like I have no control over, over the blade because of uh, the length and the grind of it. It, it. Whenever I use this to cut open boxes, or especially if I use this to get, some, get something out of a plastic, you know, one of those plastic shells <laughs> and casings, this knife, it, it kind of pierces a little bit too well and, and I lose control over it. So for those reasons, I recommend the cut jack, keeping all that kind of stuff in mind. Moving on to my first Kershaw knife that I recommend on this list, and this is from well, I already said it. It's from Kershaw. Allow myself to introduce myself. This is known as the Kershaw Leak. Uh, ironically, this knife needs no introduction because a lot of people see this at stores and they see, see this in their, you know, outdoor stores or, or Walmart or whatever. But this knife is great. It is spring assist and it, it has a safety in case you don't want it. To, you don't want to feel like it's going to open up in your pocket. It's done by Ken Onion. It's small, and I mean, it's pretty much everything that has already been said about this knife has been said. Excellent knife, but if you feel that that's gonna be too small and you're gonna put one of your everyday carry knives up against heavier cutting tasks, then maybe you'll want a budget-friendly, 
E-Wrist knife, and this is one of the best slicers that is in this whole video, honestly. And this knife is only around 30-ish dollars. And it's from Kershaw. It's spring assist, just like the uh, Kershaw Leak. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it is budget-friendly either, even though it has steel that is a little bit less of a high, higher quality than some of the other steels that are out there. But if you do want something similar to the Leak, maybe one that isn't made in China, then maybe go with the Kershaw Dividend. Now, this one came out, I think a few years ago, and it has the American flag on it. So for those of you who are extra patriotic, the Kershaw Dividend might be for you. But for many people, uh, the Kershaw Leak is one that just, it just simply stands alone. The next knife I'll be talking about is from Benchmade. This one is known as the Benchmade Bug Out, and although it has S30V Premium Steel, this knife is only just over $100, whereas a few years ago, knives with S30V steel would have cost you at least a few hundred or so. So I thought that was really cool, and a lot of other people have too, and this knife has really made waves in the knife community. A great knife to compare the Benchmade Bug Out with would be, of course, the Benchmade Griptilian, which is one of my most carried knives. It's, it is my work knife that I'm carrying every day, I really like having a knife that has partial serrations for work, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you like a plain edge knife or, or a partially serrated blade or fully serrated blade for that matter for your work knife? Let me know down below. But whereas this knife is excellent, I mean, for all the, for all the reasons why I carry it every day, the Benchmade Bug Out is extremely lightweight and you basically forget that you even have it. Other people might not even know that you have it because it has that deep carry uh, pocket clip. Now, other Benchmades in the past that I've recommended include the Benchmade Osborne 940. However, this knife, the, the, the cheapest variant of it, even though it has the same blade steel, comes in at over $170. And I think this one right here that I have in my hand comes in at like $240 or so because it has the carbon fiber handles. So, you know, it's much better of a deal to go with the Benchmade Bug Out in my opinion. And I think that's why it's making the waves that it is in the knife community. The next knife that I'll be talking about on my list is the Paramilitary 2 from Spyderco. However, this is not the knife that I'm going to be including as my most recommended knife. This will not finish out the list. I just want to use this to compare what my final recommendation will be. So you can see the Paramilitary 2 is a made for, as its name implies, kind of a tactical, you know, military type of role. Compare that against uh, Spyderco's flagship, which is the Spyderco Delica, you can see the difference between something made for the military or law enforcement versus something that is more civilian centered and even though the the Delica is, is probably my most carried knife that is not the final knife that I'll be talking about because the next knife I'll be going over will be the one and only Manix 2 from Spyderco. This is my final recommendation. Now some of you might, might ask well why would you choose the Manix 2 over the other two and that's basically because it takes the other two as well as other great things we'll talk about and combines it into one knife option or the kind of a, like a, a one knife fits all kind of solution and this knife it's lightweight it's not very expensive it comes in at around eighty dollars for the for the manix 2 it's very ergonomic it's lightweight like i said and the grip on this it, it, you basically you're not going to drop this knife and honestly i don't know of any other knife that offers this much control over cutting than the, than the Spyderco Manix 2. I really like this knife and I recommend it to pretty much anyone who is looking for a knife that costs around $80. So for that reason, I have it on this list. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. What knives do you recommend for others for purchasing of their first knife? And hopefully this knife video made you guys realize all of the great different options that are out there. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Y'all stay safe out there and remember it pays to be prepared. God bless.